The years leading up to and during menopause are a rite of passage. The wise woman inside of us is calling to slow down, to take stock, to speak our truth, to burn away all that no longer serves us, ready for our next cycle of life. The good news is with the support, community, connection, and most of all, sharing our stories and being truly seen and heard, we will travel through this powerful, sometimes painful, heroine's journey and out the other side. Welcome to the Menopause Podcast, real and raw stories of midlife and mental health. I'm your host, Kylie Patchett, menopause self-care coach and storyteller, and I am so glad you found us. Let's get on with the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the podcast. And today I have a very, very cool person in the studio. This is Laurie Seitz. How are you, Laurie? I'm doing really well. Thanks so much for having me. I'm so looking forward to this conversation because like I said to you before we started recording, I'm like, this is one of those fork in the road stories that coincides with our late forties when we're starting to go, "Mm, I don't know whether this life is really fitting me. So would you like to introduce yourself to those of uh, my listeners that do not know you as yet? Absolutely. Where to start? So I... (laughs) I was born, no, um, <laughs> not that far back. I was born on a cold winter day. Uh, <laughs> no, I, um, I'll start with my entrepreneurial journey, which started in 2003 when I, I was making and marketing a product called the Gratitude Cookie. Ooh. And my company was called Zen Rabbit Baking Company at the time. So my company now is still called Zen Rabbit. That's cool. Baking. Yes. And I, so I have a background of a million years in marketing. Yeah. And so when I started creating this product, the gratitude cookie, um, based on this family recipe, Mm -hmm. it was, the goal was to create something that was uh, a way for businesses to say thank you to their clients and their referral sources. So good. And yeah. So I was talking about gratitude as a way to differentiate your business. Yeah then that kind of extended into talking about gratitude and overall and how it can affect your life. And I ran that business for 11 years and couldn't quite scale it the way I would have liked to. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, actually let's be honest, I couldn't get it to be profitable. So there wasn't, I couldn't get it profitable. So I couldn't scale it. Yeah. I mean, the real thing is it was a struggle to make money with that business, even though it was such an amazing idea and people love such a good idea. Yeah. And maybe now with the knowledge I have, who knows? Uh, It wasn't meant to be. (laughs) No. Yeah. It was a, but I learned so much and I learned about networking and running a business and mark even more about marketing and branding. Yep. And with the time, so I shut it down, ran it for 11 years shut it down at the same time that my mom was diagnosed with an acute form of leukemia and passed Mm. away six weeks later. And so here I am mourning the death of my business and my mom at the same Mm. time. Mm. And like a lot of people, that business was my identity. So now who am I now that I'm not running this business? What Mm. purpose do I have? Who am I? Do I have any worth? This was my whole life. And So, yeah. So having to wrap my head around that. And that's when I started asking that question of, do I want to live the next 20 years the same way I lived the last 20? Yeah. And, um, yeah. And decide, and what would I do differently if I don't want to? Yeah. And so that took me a couple, it it took me a, a while to get back on, like, get back on my feet, but figure out what I was going to do. I did some consulting back in marketing and then I started another business teaching people uh, networking strategies, like, cause I had to learn with that business how yeah, to yeah, walk yeah. into a room full of Here's people a skill, yeah. that you don't know. Yeah. And especially as a, um, as an introvert, although I don't like to use, you know, introvert and extrovert people. No, they're like, so like, yes, introverts are not wallflowers. No, they're not. No, they're not antisocial. <laughs> it just may be a little bit more difficult for us to break into conversations or to get to know people. We have less tolerance for, those superficial conversations yes, yeah, that, level that lead nowhere. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. teaching networking strategies, but then pandemic came along and nobody was going to any oh, events. Goodness and gracious. So, <laughs> You're like, really? really? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and so had to, you know, transition again 
and came back into this concept of talking about the concepts of gratitude mm. and adding in meditation and how do you mm. stay calm and grounded, which is currently my mission of teaching the world to stay calm and grounded, no matter what's going on around them. Oh, amen. 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 Yep. Yes. That's a key, isn't it? Because the gratitude and calmness is all very well when everything is going swimmingly and life is good. And I keep on reminding myself in my own practice, um, I keep on falling off the bandwagon with my meditation practice at the moment. And I'm like, this is the thing that keeps you the most regulated, no matter what Mm. happens around you. So if you want to feel more even tempered and like you've got this deep keel of, you know, gentle sort of foundation as you slice through the waves of perimenopause, I always think, Um, then meditation daily is, you know, one of the things that helps me to do that. But yeah, it's, it's one of those things that you're reminded how much you need it only when life is going a little bit pear-shaped and you're like, shit, that's why I should have been doing that for the last yeah, few months. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You realize how much it helps you when you are not doing it. Yes, correct. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, do you find, this is just a, I'm going off topic already, not off topic, but it's, I'm peeking, my brain is pinging at me to say, do you find that when you're talking to people about gratitude and meditation, there's a resistance there in terms of I feel like so much of our world sets our nervous systems at this crazy rate Mm -hmm. and a lot of us and you talk about high achievers which I want to dive into as well but a lot of us high achievers are not comfortable being calm at least at first is that something you find or is that just me (laughs) absolutely yeah absolutely because what is familiar Yes. Is the chaos. Yeah. Unfamiliar hell versus familiar heaven. Oh, no. Familiar hell versus unfamiliar heaven. I always get that wrong. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so it is uncomfortable. Yes. Because people get comfortable living in that chaos, living in that drama. Yeah. Even though they say they don't like it and they would rather have peace of mind Mm -hmm. when they get to or they're introduced to techniques that can help them achieve that. Yes. It feels alien again alien yeah yeah that's exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. it and yeah. so there is resistance to it and at it's, the same time when you can push through that and get to a place where like you were talking about where you see the benefits yeah where exactly. you can feel what it feels like when you are coming from this mm. centered grounded place yeah and it takes a little while, like anything you, you need to get, you know, if you're playing piano, you're not good the first day. No, God, no. <laughs> I know. I'm right? pretty certain I'd be crap for my entire lifetime with that one. <laughs> <laughs> but all of these things take time. So what do you it, reckon? Cause when I, when I am sensing the resistance in myself, cause this is a very familiar cycle and the other thing that I know about myself is that I resist a gratitude, sorry, not gratitude so much. Gratitude is quite set in stone in my life, but the meditation end of things, I resist it particularly when um, I don't remember that the truest form of myself, like whatever you want to call that authentic self or higher self or whatever, <clears throat> that's the part of me that wants to meditate. And all the other, like I'm I'm trained in IFS, so I talk a lot in parts language, like the parts of me that are comfortable with the chaos and are very scared of the quiet and actually feeling and all of those things. So uh, for me, that's um, that's kind of cracked the nut lately. I feel like I'm going to put a kibosh on myself and be like touching wood here. (laughs) Um, But yeah, that's, that's cracked. If I if I sit down, because it's in my morning habit stack, if I sit down to meditate and I've got a lot of resistance coming up, I'm finding it really helpful just to say, wow, the part of me that resists this gorgeous calmness and the part of me that has taught herself from a very young age to stay busy, to not feel, and to achieve, to try and prove worth and all of those things is actually trying to run the show at the moment. Mm-hmm. And I actually really, really would much rather listen to my higher self as a source of truth rather than a little, you know, tiny version of me um, from way back. 
When you're working with high achievers, do you find that similarly? Is there a pattern there for a lot of us? Yes, that's that's very common. Mm-hmm. So let me ask you a question. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever given a name to those those voices? Yeah, I it, when I first did my IFS training, I had names for every single part. And now I think I got too complicated with them all. Like yeah. was, you know, like but, but they could all have essentially the same name because yeah. it's the chaos. Yeah, it's it's not just me. name. Right. Yeah. And you name the chaos, but you can talk, talk to it Yes, when what it's not you, you and yeah. say, Hey, what, yeah. What are you doing here? Yep. And you can also ask yourself, even if you weren't naming it, what am I getting out of this? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Where, what is the benefit? Cause there's always a benefit. And always, get, always, always. I get a lot of Second pushback game. from people. Yeah, yeah. I get a lot of pushback from people on this because I've had a lot of people say, there's not a benefit. I don't feel there's no, I'm not getting anything out of this. I don't like it. It's not working for me. Yeah. Well, yeah, you are getting a benefit because otherwise you wouldn't be there. Yeah, correct. You would walk away from that so fast. You just don't understand what it is. And maybe we need to dig it out or you need to figure it out. But there is, you are getting some benefit. 100%, 100%. Because the system requires you to have a purpose behind what you're doing so yeah Mm -hmm. and it's always seeking for me it's always seeking safety and control it always comes back to safety and control safety and control safety and control and unfortunately like they they safety sounds like a good thing but when um I think when you don't have a good experience of feeling safe as a kid safety feels really uncomfortable Mm-hmm. And so that that's my edge at the moment. So it's really interesting when I was reading through this last night again, I was like, oh, yes, we're going to have that conversation so that I can bring that right smack bang into my awareness. And I agree with you when when I talk about secondary gain in like a coaching session, people will be like, there is no benefit. And I'm like, okay, let's just ask a few questions. And then they kind of get that uh, <laughs> look on their right. faces. And I'm like, yep, right. there it is. But- it's really difficult to dig it out yourself though. Oh, absolutely. And that's one of the reasons why working with a coach on something like this is so important because it, it's too easy to fool yourself and just go, no, there's no benefit and walk away from that conversation and not, and just yeah. shut it down and not deal yeah, with it. Exactly. And then you don't get to the truth. And so you don't get the unraveling of whatever pattern right. you're in. Exactly. Anyway, I've created a garden path, which we've gone down, but I want to come back. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Sorry, Laurie. Um, to you have this sentence you said in the summer of 2022. So you got to you you got to um, the pandemic, everything shuts down, the networking's not happening. So that version of your business is kind of like not 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 viable at that time. And mm-hmm. then you say here, in the summer of 2022, I was doing all the things and not getting any results that I would have liked. And I wasn't having fun. So I stopped doing all the things and took a month long road trip sabbatical with my 19 year old cat, which I've got, I don't know, like (laughs) in my head, I've got such a clear picture of you in a car with a cat. So tell us about that. Why, how did that decision happen? Was it one of those, you know, come to my knees kind of moments where it's just like, F this, nothing's happening. Like (laughs) nothing's working. I need to do something different. Yes. And no. So, and first of all, I will send you a picture because I have a picture that I took as we were pulling out of the parking area of my apartment building, but as we were getting started and it was almost like a last minute thing. I was like, you know, I should take a picture and document this. Yes, you should. I have this and people freaking love this picture. I want it to be your cover. Can we make that your cover? Yeah. I'll send it to you. (laughs) Yeah. So, so yeah. So it was about, um. Uh, maybe May, June, yeah. around this same time last yeah, year, yeah, yeah, that I started having conversations. I had a conversation with a friend who was talking to me about uh, Brene Brown, who mm-hmm. had written a blog post about taking the summer off and like close. She was closing her office, and I think yeah. everyone was taking this summer sabbatical. Sabbatical. Yeah. And so Julie was talking about this and she had read this article and she's like, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to shut down for the whole summer. Yeah. She was at a point where she was just going to burn her business down yep. and yep, yep. see what came out of that. Mm-hmm. I wasn't ready to burn my business down. Mm-hmm. I just needed a break. Yeah. But at that time with the conversation with her, I was like, 
yeah, I, I can't do that. That sounds wonderful, but yes. I can't do that. Yes. And then I had another conversation with one of my podcast guests, Chris Shembra, who wrote a yep. book called Gratitude Through Hard Times. Yes. And we were talking about somewhat of a, a breakdown that he had mm -hmm. as someone who talks and teaches about gratitude all the time. And he had lost his connection with gratitude mm -hmm. and it had very dire consequences for him. And he, so he was talking about that and about yeah. losing this connection. And I was like, Hmm, maybe, mm. uh, maybe a sabbatical. And then I had a third conversation. Now everything comes in threes, right? Yep. With, um, with somebody else who eventually became another podcast guest on my show. But at the time, that's not what we were talking about. And she had, she was celebrating having just sold her house yes. and she was going to live in an RV and travel around. Oh, and it's my dream kinda, life. She was still going to be working, but it was going to be sort of a sabbatical yeah, yeah. of just, yeah, I'm not going to be rooted anywhere. I'm just going to go off. And that's at that job. point I was like, oh my God, am I the only person that is actually sticking around? <laughs> right. I, you know, and so then I started thinking, all right, how can I do this? Mm. See, I think when you ask that question, it's so much, it's such a more uh, productive question yeah. than so much more I, open. Yeah. How can I, Yep. or what would need to happen? Cause a lot of times, you know, I'm always talking about the, how is the domain of the universe. That's yes. not ours to figure out. So what would need to happen yeah. for me to be able to do this? Yeah. 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 And so, yeah. So my 19 year old cat, needed sub Q fluids twice a week because she had kidney disease. Mm. So trying to figure out what to do with her, if mm -hmm. I was going to take off for any amount of time was a challenge. Yeah. And I have an animal communicator friend who said she would rather be with you than anywhere yeah. else. Yeah. hundred percent. And once she said that that's what Panther wanted, I was like, Panther. all right, <laughs> Panther. Yeah. So cute. Yeah all right, we're going, we're doing this. Yeah. And so where I went on that trip was mostly determined by where I could take her. Mm -hmm. Like I, the first stop was at a friend's house, but yeah. this was a friend who said, sure, bring her. She's welcome to stay yes, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind of determined where we went. And yeah, it was a month long. Oh. Amazing. She was such a good traveler. I knew she was a good traveler, but we had never been on the road for that long. Yeah, of course. I wouldn't even think to do that with a cat because my cat's a bit of a crazy cat. <laughs> He's very yes. young. Well, I, I had a second cat who passed away um, in April of 2022. And mm -hmm. the she was crazy. Like I wouldn't have been able to do it with her. No. And because she was no longer here in her physical form, that's why I was able to do this. So like things happened. Yep. Trust and the timing. Yeah. Interestingly enough too, though, Panther, after Car her name was Karma, after Karma passed, Panther would howl constantly howl. Mm -hmm. And again, my animal communicator said it's because she can still feel Karma's energy, but she doesn't see her. Yeah. Once we were on the road, there was no more howling. Nice. We were yeah. not in the same physical space. Yeah. We got home, started again. Yeah. Yeah. But the whole time we were gone, she was not, she was just. Animals are so cool, aren't they? Blissful. She just loved, I don't know that she loved being in the car, but she did, she did really well. She loved being with you though. That's the She thing. did. She yeah. did. Absolutely. Aww. And we had a fantastic time. So yeah, so this, <laughs> this uh, I will send it to you. Thank this you. whole thing about the sabbatical was I was working so hard and trying to make things happen. The yep. whole phrase of I can make this happen. Like mm -hmm. we can't make anything happen, but we talk about it all the time. Like we do, like we can, but so letting go and allowing ease and flow and acceptance <sighs> and fun. And the, the funny thing was that I, the beginning of 2022, my phrase for that for 2022 was ease and flow, but I yeah. was not allowing it. Yeah, yeah. It's so Until, funny. Hey, we set those intentions and yeah, like, right. Either. And the universe structures yeah. it that way so Correct. that it did show up in August. Yeah. And you know, we talk about this concept of allowing ease and flow, and that's how things come to you when you're mm -hmm. in this place. Yeah, yeah. When you're open. Right. We get that intellectually. Yeah. But 
once I did this and I went off and said, all right, I'm just going to go and have fun. Yeah. And I'm not doing all the things anymore. I'm just, I'm not having fun. I'm just going to go focus on having fun. That's mm-hmm. it. That's when I started to understand that concept of ease and flow Yeah. on an inter like to internalize that. Mm. So good. And the interesting thing that happened was that two of the biggest business opportunities to ever cross my plate came <laughs> while I was on sabbatical, not working. Yeah. Because I was allowing ease and flow. Yeah. And 100%. Yeah. And one of them didn't pan out, and that's okay. But it was interesting that it showed up. And the other one is part of something I'm doing now. And it's just amazing. Like I could have never imagined or program this like this is how it's amazing how things show up that you don't even know exist can't even conceive of yeah no this is what I'm I've had a oh, an affirmation for a long long time um about being a magnet to magnificent opportunities and to me when I feel into when I am in the state of feeling magnetic it's just complete trust it's actually trust in it's both trust in the universe providing and also self-trust in that whatever mm-hmm. is provided, you will be able to respond to. And so there's that, um, you know, it reminds me of the concept of like healthy wood energy in traditional Chinese medicine is like the the tree that can just respond to the wind. Like there's no mm-hmm. snapping, there's no reactiveness. It's just like, it just literally goes with the flow. And I think yeah. a lot of us say the words I want ease and flow, but we're not willing or not brave enough or not comfortable enough actually letting go and really living in that state. And that is like, uh, yeah, again, the edge for me, I left my corporate job back in October last year and I was like, I don't know how, but this is going to, it's, everything will be fine. And it absolutely Mm. has been fine. And I find same sort of thing that you're saying, such strange things, not strange, but so unexpected things unfolding that I was just having a conversation with someone yesterday. I'm just like, I did not see that coming. I did not see that coming or that coming or that coming. And that's where I'm like, there's no way that my little tiny brain with my own little tiny slice of perception of, you know, all of the quantum possibilities Mm -hmm. could possibly conceive of all the magic that's available to us. So it's like, just put your brain to the side then and trust, (laughs) use your belly, use your heart and just dip into that. Right. And going back to the whole concept of meditation, Mm. I think that helps magnetize things because you are getting into this calm, you're getting into that quantum field that Joe Dispenza talks about Mm -hmm. and planting seeds, even if it's like you were saying about being magnetic to opportunities. And one of my things that I had focused on a lot was, uh, and I'm not a big fan of affirmations and we can talk about that, but yeah, this, yeah, this phrase of cool opportunities just show up for me. Yeah. That's a good one. And that's what happened. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's so cool. I like that. Cool opportunities just show up for me. Um, do you know what I love most about that too, is that there is a, an energy of playfulness mm-hmm. and not, and, and here's what I've, Learn like I've learned this so many times in my life. I'm just relearning it in this <laughs> version of my entrepreneurship. Playfulness and taking care of my energy first is where it's at. And yeah. what my conditioning had been was um, sit your ass down at that, you know, desk and try your hardest, like bleed yourself dry. And I've done that in almost every corporate job that I've ever had. Um, I've done it in over delivering in relationships, in family situations, like everything. And it's that, yeah, finally this year. And I think this is a, this is a, like, I don't want to live my next 20 years, like this kind of, Mm -hmm. you you know, the fork in the road moments where, when I can sit in this, I actually, my most important thing to do is just take care of my energy. That's it. Yep. And so now you know, I I think people might think, oh my God, she's talking about morning and afternoon habit, evening habit stacks again, because I'm so into atomic habits. I've just read it for the, I think, fourth time. But just that identity shifting of like, I am a well woman. And if I take care of myself, everything else takes care, care of itself. And that to me is that um, it's the complete shift in identity. And I think that mm-hmm. that like, 
what do you think brought what what do you, when those three messages about taking sabbaticals pop in do you believe that's like the universe tapping you on the shoulder and just going oi you you've gone off track a little bit here there's another way and then the yes. energy of playfulness because you've gone and had fun and i also think the other thing about traveling to me well, the joy that I get out of traveling is that beginner's mind type of thing where everything's new and everything's cool because it's like, you know, I haven't seen that before. Or I haven't whatever. And I don't know whether you were traveling where you hadn't before, but that's the sort of energy that I feel like, again, that's light energy, right? It's like playful mm-hmm. and and joyful and like, let's just go and give it a crack, you know, that type of like open to anything situation. So now that you're back, so obviously you've been back for a little while, what What's shifted for you in business? You've stayed in the zone of believing cool opportunities just show up and cool opportunities have. Can you tell us about like how's your day-to-day in business changed? Like what, you know, for people that are kind of listening going, this all sounds great, but how the freaking hell do I actually shift yeah. from one to the other? Yeah. And that's a great question. Big question. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. I- Honestly, I was very reluctant or hesitant around coming back. I mean, obviously I had to come back. Yes. But I was yeah. somewhat afraid of well, how am I going to continue this yeah. energy? Yes. Because, and I get like, I'm not minimizing people who are addicts is that's a much bigger issue. Hmm. At the same time, when you are, when you come, when you go to recovery, let's say, and then you come back to that same environment that you were using in, it's very difficult to stay clean. Yeah. From what I understand, I don't have any personal experience. And so this is what I was feeling like, okay, now I'm coming back into the same environment. How am I going to Hmm. not get sucked back into doing 15 hours of work a day and, and nothing else? Yes. And so I didn't really have a great plan. <laughs> I just went, all right, well, I'm aware of this. Yeah. And it's still a struggle. There are, I'm doing better with it and in shutting down the computer and going off and reading or taking time to recharge. But one of the conversations I had while I was on that sabbatical with a mm-hmm. friend mm-hmm. was about living a sabbatical life because he mm, said, I love me, this. Yes. I feel like I already live a sabbatical life. He lives in South Florida. He, um, he said he works a few hours a day Yeah, in gets up early, works a few hours. And then at maybe two in the afternoon, he's, he's done. He goes and hangs out with his wife and Mm. takes time to swim in the pool or, yeah you know, play, do whatever. Yeah. And then maybe in the evening, he'll come back for an hour or two, maybe Mm -hmm. if he feels like it and do a little bit more work, but that's it. And then when he gets back into it the next morning, he's fully recharged. Yes. This is the part that we, as especially high achievers do not allow ourselves. And we We don't like value. Like it's like rest is like a four letter word. Right. Yeah. And, and it's like a bad thing to do. And what this last, yeah, seven months has shown me is the more I rest, I've actually, yeah, the more I rest, the more I receive on all levels. Like when I feel well resourced and for me at the moment, particularly with like the fatigue end of things, I definitely have less um, energy in my tank and I'm just like, right. So when that runs out, here's the invitation. And, and like you just said, sometimes I still ignore it. But sometimes, and it is getting more, I will actually let that be, yeah, a trigger to actually go, okay, I know that if I stop now, go and have time out, um, get into the sun at the moment, we just talking about the winter sun, like, you know, recharge in the sun, have some time with my family, have some time with my pets, maybe go on a bike ride and then come back, you know, well rested. Yeah. It makes everything so much easier. And I'm like, oh my God, I've complicated things my entire life by pushing through. Yeah. It's counterintuitive to what we've been conditioned to believe since we were born. Yes. We've been programmed to believe that hard work is the way to success and you work and you work and you work. 
and you take time to rest and recharge when the work is done, but the work is never done. So we don't allow ourselves time. The truth is that, like you said, is necessary, critical and necessary to success. It is not a reward for after you're done working. It is the key to being successful. Mm. And yet we still, and so we can say this again on the conscious level, Yes, this requires rewiring your brain because 100%. you can hear what we're saying and, and agree with it and still not allow yourself to do it because one, like we talked about earlier, you're not trusting. Yeah. You don't trust that this yes. is really how things work Yeah, because why would you, you've been taught for 40 or 50 or 60 years that that's not how it works. And the entire planet, well, actually- yes not the entire planet, but the majority of yes. <laughs> capitalist <laughs> westernized right. parts of the planet is that working hard has some reward at the end of it. And then I'm like, then you hear about people that have a heart attack the day that they retire and you think, right. well, that's a big lot of bullshit, isn't it? Anyway, sorry, yes. I interrupted you. So yes. number no, one, that's, no that's trust. Completely it. So, <laughs> right. The trust and, um, uh, there was something else, but I'll, I'll, that'll come back to me, yeah, but yeah, sorry. Look, at, look at the majority of high performing business leaders. Yes. They all, they, uh, I got caught one time. Somebody was like, they don't all, okay. Uh, the majority Most. of them. Yes. Practice meditation. Yes, they do. Why is that? Yep. Look at like Richard Branson yep. and Ray Dalio and, uh, uh, the guy who started link, um, not Salesforce, I can't I'm, call his I'm name. I'm so but, bad at all those names. Yeah. It's like, I don't yeah. live in that bubble. So I don't pay any right, attention. Right. Okay. <laughs> but all of them and the, and look at the highest performing athletes, yep. Carly Lloyd, the soccer player yep. and, um, LeBron James and all of oh, these. So many. Yep. They practice meditation for not because they have nothing else to do. No. And they do yeah. meditation and visualization. And that's the other thing yeah. that um, I'm doing this thing at the moment that I'm really loving. Um, I like to throw anything at shifting out of, you know, conditioned behavior. And at the moment I'm throwing, um, I'm inside a mastermind and each month we write basically a vision for the month, which is mm. not a new thing, but I've taken to actually recording it. And I always record it when my energy, like, you know, after I've gone to the gym, lifted heavy, have that like nice endorphin thing happening. And I've listened to music and I'm like, yeah, I can do anything, you know, like that sort of like real positive, upbeat vibe. And then when I'm in that state, I will record the vision. And I put so much like, you know, this is the most amazing version of it. And it's so interesting that I've been doing that for since February, so February, March, April, May. So this is the fourth month. I listen to it every, well, most days, um, sometimes twice a day, but that listening to your own voice telling yes. you the story. And again, it's limited because like we said before, my little brain can't conceive of the quantum, you know, as much as I try and, you know, dip into it. Like obviously you're only just sort of like tipping yourself over the edge, mm-hmm. and, you know, <laughs> but it's still better than getting stuck in the patterns of the, no, I have to work really hard or no, or there's some sort of lack coming up or whatever. Um, I just turn on my own voice and it's like getting a pep talk from like the highest or not highest version of you, but like this energized, yeah. open, inflow, trusting. And it's yeah. so cool because I I find listening, that's why I have a podcast, obviously, like listening to someone's voice is so much more connective than, you know, reading something or whatever. So you can hear the the tone, you can hear the joy, you can hear the playfulness, you can hear the, the sense of trust. Um, and I'm just loving that. It feels like... Um, I'm able to kind of better sit above those moments where I do go into that, oh, I've got to like strap myself to the desk because I've got so much to do. When I say that, right. that phrase in my head, I've got so much to do. I'm like, oh, fuck off. <laughs> I'm just right, like, no, right, exactly. Way, go back. You know, yeah. you're it's, going down that slippery slide. We have been taught that the outer work 
is mm. what's important. Like, of course, yes, you need to learn how to do some things. Yes, yeah, of course. Like in there's terms action of running taking. your business, there's, yeah. ac- there's definitely action taking. Yeah, so thank 100%. you for bringing that up because yes. this is not about sitting on your sofa and gazing at wishing that bags of money will fall from the sky. Yeah, or, actually, you know, let's the perfect pop. mate will knock yeah. on the door. Let's pop that bubble because when you say meditation to some people, they will still think you mean that you're sitting and you're just, well, actually probably more so manifestation. But to me, when you're meditating, when you're aligning yourself to that, yeah, calmer, more grounded version of yourself, that is actually when manifestation, like we're always manifesting anyway, but it's when I'm magnetic to those magnificent things and I don't have continual shit showing up at my front door. (laughs) Yeah. Wait, so, well, you, you mentioned Atomic Habits, which yeah. you, I just finished reading that a few weeks ago for the first time. Yeah, yeah. And I love that he talks about in that book, the difference between uh, being in motion and taking action. Oh, when I you are in motion, yeah. yeah, you're in motion, you're busy. You're busy. You're yes. doing stuff. You're doing stuff, but you're not accomplishing anything. You're not yes. really being productive. Yes. When you are taking action, you're taking, and I don't know that he says it this way, but you're taking inspired action. And I think that inspired action comes, you are inspired the to take certain actions when you have been in touch with your inner voice. 100%. Yeah. And you are getting direction from your mm. higher power or whatever yeah. it is you want to call it. And the only way you can get that direction, because you mentioned earlier too, about so much outside distraction, there's plenty of sources, family, friends, colleagues, social media, so traditional much. media, everybody wants to tell you how to live yeah. your life. Yeah. hundred percent. Yep. Mm-hmm. Even though they're not doing such a great job on their own. Exactly. They got, they got <laughs> information. They got, they know what you should be doing. Be careful um, what you're listening to people. <laughs> exactly. So when you can get to a space where you can hear your own inner voice and you're yeah. the only one who can hear it, that's going to give you the inspired action. And yeah. sometimes you're going to question like, what? Really? No, yeah. I can't do that. Mm-hmm. Yes. Listen anyway, because that's not going to steer you wrong. And so that's what we, when we're talking about plenty of people busy, yeah, but they're not getting anywhere. And yes. that's, those are the high achievers that I tend to work with that go to sleep at night, feeling like they haven't accomplished enough. They just yeah. worked 15 or 16 or 17 hours a day and they're spinning. Their they're wheels. exhausted, but they mm. didn't move the needle. They don't feel like they actually yeah. accomplished anything. Yeah. And that's part of the reason why. It's yeah, because it's the spinning the wheels. And actually, as you're talking, the busyness, like when I think about, I talk a lot about um, trauma resurgence when we get to these perimenopausal stages, like shit that you haven't mm. looked at, healed, faced, dealt with, unfortunately, tends to pop to the surface. And I think for me, like I've always known this to a certain degree, but I really, really feel it is the busyness, the being in motion has just Mm -hmm. been a numbing strategy. That's it. Yeah. And so this kind of um, the pattern of always having to be doing to feel okay internally, just a numbing. And now, you know, I'm very grateful to be in a support circle where I I can go down those paths a little bit more gently, gently, (laughs) as always. Mm -hmm. But I'm noticing that it's like my tendency to need to be in motion so not productive not um and I also just listen to um essentialism again which I love goes with atomic habits beautifully but it's like are you actually taking action on the essentials that you actually want to shift the needle on or are you just in motion keeping yourself busy doing shit that doesn't need to be done um that no one actually notices it's not going to make any difference to your bottom line or your satisfaction when you your head hits a pillow and um I think I feel like when you start to unravel the part of you that wants to stay in motion, it's uncomfortable, but there's also this kind of, well, for me, I can only speak from my experience. I feel like for the first time in my life, I'm actually meeting myself underneath all that. Mm. I'm just like, oh my God, there was actually nothing to be 
terrified about, and yes, there's strong emotions definitely to do with the trauma end of things, but um, this wisdom that's underneath all the busyness. And, yeah. and like you say, um, I used to listen to, what's her name, Lacey Phillips, um, To Be Magnetic is her company, and I used to do her, um, it's a thing called DIs, like um, I can't even remember what that is, stands, but she talks about following the pings, which is basically, you know, different language to what you're saying. It's like connect mm-hmm. your inner voice, and then when your inner voice says you should call that person, just do it. Don't ask, mm-hmm. you know, don't don't um confuse things, don't get the you know, dirt on the windshield, just do that. And um, when you said before, sometimes it's uncomfortable. I had that happen yesterday. I had the card open for something. And the whole time I had the card open for this launch, something wasn't feeling right. And I couldn't put my finger on it. And I was like, is this just old patterning from me feeling like launching always has to feel a bit sticky and, you know, heavy? which of course it doesn't, but that's, you know, the mm-hmm. way that I used to do business to fulfill my need to be in motion and complicate yeah. things. Launching was always horrible. And then, yeah, I got this ping. It's like, you need to actually completely pivot the way that you're doing this and have taken action on that. 100% feel so much more relief and also this um, bubbling of like excitement about the different way that I'm doing this. Yeah, But the old me would have gone, that is ridiculous. You cannot do that in the middle of a launch period. People will think, and I'm like, people aren't even bloody paying any attention. Trust me. Right. Like, no one is right. paying attention as much as what you think. Um, and I'm excited because, because I was just saying to you before we started recording, in the winter, I always have this really big desire to hibernate. And I've got a feeling like it's the 31st of May, winter is tomorrow. I've got this feeling like I want to like pull the covers over and just bunker on down and fulfilling on what I was launching would have meant that I couldn't for two mornings a week. Like I'd have to get out of bed early. And I was like, I don't want to do that. Now I'm looking at my calendar and for the whole of winter, there's no early morning or late evening, which I've been doing a lot of lately. And I'm like, oh my God, if I had ignored that, I would have had this massive amount of like simmering kind of same pattern. I've got to work hard to do something like it's got to be hard because it's got to be uncomfortable to and I'm like no it fucking doesn't if you take care of yourself and your needs your business is way better for it and your clients will be way better held because your energy is clean and it's you know light and warm and welcoming like that's what I want it to feel like not the other way around and I'm like oh my god yeah that's such a good and this is a concept I've talked about with um with other people with clients as well as uh I'm thinking of a particular guest that was on my podcast. Yeah. It can be easy. Yes. Why do we think it needs to be, everything needs to be difficult? Yeah. It can be easy. 100%. Yep. Yep. And going back to something you were talking, when you were talking about your launch, Mm. um, I just had a conversation with someone who said to the question to ask when you're doing something that is new or uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. Is is this a stretch for me or is it out of my is is it out of alignment with my values? Alignment 100%. Yeah. Cuz say it, that again. Say that again. Un- Just they both feel uncomfortable, but yeah. it's asking yourself is this a stretch for me? Mm-hmm. Or is it out of alignment? Yeah. It's it's the same. Um, I had a conversation with the coach that I work with yesterday and I was like, my gut is telling me to do this and my energy feels really clean and clear about it. Whereas I have gone down the path in past launches in my first iteration of business way back um, where I have felt like, screw it, it's not working the way I want it and just to pull the pin and like run away. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that is not how I was feeling. And and so to me, that would be the difference between, you know, stretching and feeling uncomfortable and not being able to hold that discomfort would be me pulling the pin back in, you know, 2012 mm-hmm. to 2017 when I was open the first time. Um, and this just felt like it wasn't in alignment. And as soon as I changed what I was doing and cleared my calendar, my entire system was just like, yeah, the entire winter with no time to get out of bed at any particular time. And usually I'm a five o'clock bright as a bunny, you know, high energy, but I just really, and I'm like, oh my God, it was just out of alignment. 
So if yeah. I had checked in and been meditating regularly before I set this launch up, I would have got that knowing way earlier than in the middle of card open. <laughs> um, yeah. But that's another example. Like I think to me when you're talking about like working with high achievers and exactly what you just said, we get conditioned to say it's all an outside game and that's exactly the opposite of what it is. We need to take care of our inside first and, yes, then get into action inspired action and yes listen to the pings and and yes not just sit on the couch and you know mm -hmm. wait for it to fall from the ceiling um when you're working with the high achievers that feel like they're going to bed after 15 hours and they're spinning their wheels but they're not getting anywhere and they're so fucking exhausted because that's what mm -hmm. all of us end up doing burning out mm -hmm. how do you work together to shift because I I'm guessing that, well, maybe not. Maybe by the time people come to you, they're ready for something different because it's obviously not working. So they're on the cusp of that shift. But where do you start? How do you how do you heal? <laughs> yeah. That. So in my, you know, my program's called um, F Being Fine. Yes. And and under that, there's the framework that's called the Trilogy for Success. And the trilogy Ooh. is gratitude, connections, and yeah. connections includes connection with, everyone in your life, yeah, friends, family, community, mm -hmm. but most importantly, or, and most importantly, yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. the third component is courage because you need courage to listen. So now you're hearing that inner voice and we talked yeah. touched on this a little earlier, you're hearing that inner voice and you're going, well, but I, I can't, quit my job. I need to pay the bills or I've been there for 20 years. I yeah. can't leave my marriage. I mean, which is another thing that we didn't mention, but I, I know I want to come back to that. Yeah. I know we're right on time, um, but I do want yeah, to come back to that but, because but you hear these voices and you're like, but I can't do that. You need the courage. Yeah. Now. absolutely. So that's why that's the third component. I love a trilogy. I love a trilogy. I love the number three is my favorite number. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure why cool. that needs to be said in a podcast, but anyway, um, I love that gratitude is a key component too, because I feel like um, another thing I do in my evening stack is notice the ways I'm supported because mm -hmm. I know for me, it's a big shift from being in trust of myself and trust of the universe. And so I am paying attention to all of the ways that life is supporting me, turning out for me, all the beautiful things. Like yesterday, my list included like the delicious almost winter sun and the fact that I have a podcast day today, which I absolutely love. And, um, you know, all so many different things. Uh, so it's kind of like milking what's in front of you for all of the, all of the ways that it's working out. So when you do this work and people are paying attention to this trilogy, working on each of the aspects, what happens to them? Because I'm going to guess that as soon as they start doing the inner work, things get easier mm -hmm. and they, they get more and more evidence that the more that you take care of your own energy and meditate and connect and practice gratitude, then the easier everything happens. What, what, yeah. Tell us about like, just say people are working with you and down the track that they come back to you and they're like, oh my God, like what's the, oh my God statement. What's the magic that starts to happen? A couple of things. One is when you start living in gratitude and looking for it, like you were talking yeah. about when you Noticing. at the end of the day, notice yeah. and, and record mm -hmm. what are the ways I'm being supported. When you can find gratitude in every situation, even yeah. the ones that look really ugly yeah, yeah. at the 100%. beginning. Mm. And this is, again, I always like to say, this is not about toxic positivity mm. and not feeling your emotions and not ever becoming angry or sad or resentful or whatever. Mm. You feel those emotions. Those are part of being human. Feel yeah, that. 100%, yeah. And find the gratitude in the situation. Yeah. You know, maybe give yourself some time to, to feel through yeah. all those yucky yeah, emotions yeah. and then find the gratitude because what you're talking about too is the, the, when you're talking about being magnetic, you will attract what you are looking for. Yeah. So if you are looking for things to be grateful for, for you know, noticing what's supporting you, 
you will attract more of those. This is yeah. not woo woo, like crazy talk. This is there's science and research behind this and yep. supportive in, in how energy works. It's yeah. It's science-based. So when you're looking for things to be grateful for, you will find more of them at the same time, when you're looking for things to complain about and criticize, you'll attract more of those too. Yep. So that's one thing that they notice is like, yeah. Hey, um, I, and when you are living in gratitude, you just feel better. Yeah. Your energy is better. So people come back and they're like, yeah, I just feel better. Yeah. <laughs> I just love uh, these. It's like, like um, and it seems so, so great. Like, what is such a simple thing? How do I feel better just because I'm living more in gratitude? Yeah. It's again, well, it's you, an energy exchange. And you, you're changing the way that you're filtering the universe. Like, and yep. you know, way back when I did my mindset training, like we literally have a mind that filters to look for what we expect to see. So yep. if we are filtering for complaints and shit and negativity and drama right. and all of that, that's what we'll filter for and we'll notice more. And one thing that shifted for me with the gratitude thing is because I'm doing it every night, when I come across something that I would usually just go, oh, yeah, nice sky, I'm like, mm -hmm. how lucky are we to live here? Um, yeah. My kids are like, you've turned into like some sort of rainbow hugger tree or something. <laughs> I'm like, I don't care. I feel a shitload better living like yeah. this. <laughs> exactly. And, uh, exactly. Yeah. So it does like even in the moment, it's not that you're just practicing gratitude at a particular time of the day. You're then noticing more and you're like, a, I, I always use the word marinating. Like um, yes. on the weekend, I had a really icky stomach thing happen on Thursday and I just felt really ordinary and I'm supposed to have a friend come and she didn't come. And I kind of was like, oh, I could go down a slippery slide of like boo-hoo, you know, nobody loves mm -hmm. me type of bullshit. And then I was like, I'm going to take myself on a date weekend. And I'm going to, so I went to the farmer's markets. I laid in the sun for an hour and a half just because it felt good. Like all of those yeah. things. And right. I'm just like, this is a living kind of day of just, I actually asked myself at the beginning of the day, what would joy do? And then yeah. I just kept on doing the next thing. So I took myself on a bushwalk and then I went and had a coffee and then I journaled and then I read in the sun and I watched a whole series of tiny, beautiful things by Cheryl Strayed, which I, I just love her books and yeah, her writing. Um, and by the end of the weekend, I was like, I am filled up to the brim. And yeah. that's that it's the filtering for the, what feels good, what feels good, what feels good. Right. And then expecting it's. There's a, I don't know, is there an edge of expecting that? Well, I definitely expect that things will work out. That's, you know, that's yeah. just the story I have of the universe. And I've got um, in my family, there's a couple of very negative people. And every time I go near them, they're like the negative Nelly sort of like, but what if this happens? And I'm like, yeah, that's not mm -hmm. my story. And that's literally all I say. And then yep. I just redirect the conversation. Yep. I'm like, that literally isn't my story. That is not yeah. my story of life. It's not my story of myself. It's not my story of my power and my choice and all of those things. So, yeah, I think, and so what happens, because I'm assuming these high achievers are like in, you know, corporate jobs or like they're high achieving in some form. Yeah. What happens yeah. to what they're trying to do so badly with their 15 hour days once yeah. they start actually taking care of all of the other things? Yeah. Well, things just get easier because you're like, you were talking about, you're living in a higher energetic vibration. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Joy and gratitude and love are the highest energetic vibrations you can be in. And so the, that's why it feels so good. Yeah. But when you're paying attention to those things, and then when you get into talking about the meditation and, you know, I know we're like, we can go for hours here. Talking <laughs> yeah. about all the myths and misconceptions around meditation. But when they start paying attention to what is it that brings them joy. Mm. And this is another big thing that a lot of people when you talk about recharge, allowing yourself time to recharge. Yes. Well, what do I do? Yeah. What, what, yes. what do I do? If I'm not working, what do I do? This was one of my issues too, and still is to some degree. Yeah. Well, if I'm not working, then, then what, can, what should I be doing? Like, well, I think how do I know? It. I don't even know what's fun anymore. So like yeah. what, I don't know anything other than work and in sitting in front of the TV may be, relaxing, but it is not recharging. 
Recharging is what you're talking about is about filling yourself up with joy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what is it that brings you that joy? And so you have to start. That's like an exercise in and of itself. And that it's not one time you sit down and create a list because it's going to take a little while. Do you know I keep on? I keep on. I'm being reminded. So this is my sabbatical moment because I've had this is the third time that this has come into my mind. I have wanted to learn how to sing for so many years. And I live in a little country town and I went to try out for the local like performing arts thing. And um <laughs> I don't know whether I've told this story on the podcast, but anyway, um, the lady that was like the, the head honcho actually wouldn't let me try out because um she said it was unlikely that I would be a good fit. That was years ago. I've been in this town for almost eight years. No, eight years okay. this year, more than eight years. And that has been my like barrier to learning how to sing. And I don't even, like, I don't want to sing solo. I just want to, they do like a performance every year. And I just think it would be fun because I love to sing. I sound like a yeah. scratch cat. I don't care about that. I'd obviously <laughs> need to be in a chorus. That's okay. I'm at peace with that. But that sense of like, I've always had that desire. And then the other Mm -hmm. thing um, is just more uh, creativity for the fun of it. Like I get a lot of creativity satisfaction out of business because you're creating from words or I'm creating Mm -hmm. graphics or that type of thing. But I mean, just for the fun of it. And as you're saying, what brings you joy? Those are the two things that keep going bing, bing, bing. I'm like, all right, Kylie, do something about it for God's sake. Yeah. (laughs) So thank you for the nudge. Um, I want to circle back. I know we've talked about meditation and your business end of things, but you said something before when you're more connected to yourself, you can hear your inner voice and it may say things like leave your marriage. So you were married for 20 years. You had one of those moments. Can you talk us through, because I'm in a lot of menopause support groups because of the the focus that I have in my coaching practice. And I saw a post the other day and this woman said, I am going to leave my marriage. This guy is an asshole and I'm so irritable. And then there was like 400 comments and Mm -hmm. people going, me too, me too, me too, me too. And I mean, there's a lot that can be said about the fact that, yeah, there's obviously multiple different things going on there. But that internal ping for you, how did you get to the stage where you trusted it? Because I think a lot of people have the ping, but they don't do anything about it necessarily. Mm -hmm. They don't have the courage piece actually from your trilogy. Right. Yeah. Right. That's Mm -hmm. it. So for tw- we were married for 22 years together yeah. for 28. Mm-hmm. So all of my adult life. Yeah. And a long piece of that, everything was fine. Mm-hmm. It was fine. We both knew yeah. that this was not serving either one of us, but neither one of us wanted to leave because mm-hmm. it was fine. Mm. That's the thing. Like nobody's beating each other. It's yeah. not terrible. It's okay. It's fine. Yeah. And I think I just reached that point where like, and that's why my program is F being fine because you reach that point. You're like, I can't, I can't. I want more than fine, fine. more than fine. And that's your soul crying out for growth and expansion. Yeah. And that was the hardest, hardest freaking thing ever I've ever done in my life. And I can't imagine that there is anything that I will ever do that will be harder than that, mm. harder than, than dealing with my mom's passing because mm. I did not, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, initiate my mom's passing that happens. That's nature. It's yes. It's so it's difficult and, and it hurts, but you didn't cause it. I didn't cause you it. You didn't decide. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 But here I was taking the initiative Mm. this marriage. Far out. That must bring up a lot of good doubt person. along the way. Absolutely. Okay. Doubt, yeah. guilt, mm. uh, some elements of shame. I mm. like, I couldn't, I, I couldn't make this work. Mm. What it, it, my parents got divorced when I was 11 and both remarried and got divorced again. Mm-hmm. And my dad's now been married to his wife for like more than 30 years. So that works. Yeah. But I, I, when I got married, I was not getting divorced. Like yeah. I'm not doing what they did. Mm. And yet I still couldn't still, and it wasn't just on me. We, 
Yeah. And he takes full response. He takes responsibility too. Like he's, yeah. he's a good person. Mm. And we still are, uh, we, we don't hang out together. We're not friends, no, no, but we're, but we're you friendly. still can talk. Yeah. 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 Uh, but it was not working for either one of us. Mm. And, and so he would never have initiated. I had to do it. I think that's, that's true of a lot of fine couples. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel like I was thinking about this yesterday. There's like, I see around me and this may just be where I am, but I see a lot of, um, you know, couples that have been married for a long time. I've been married for a long time, 23 years. Um, and same thing, like met very young. So, you know, your whole mm-hmm. adult life. So yeah. I just, even the concept of, yeah, I can understand <laughs> how that would be identity. Cause you talked about identity with your mom and your business and then yeah. that identity piece too. So you've really yeah. gone through this huge transformation. Um, I see in couples in our, in our circle, the guys are getting quite old mm-hmm. and then the women are doing this like rebirthing. Thing. Yes. And they're like, mm-hmm. I'm going to wear the cool colors and I'm going to take up the freaking hobby. I'm going to get a motorbike, which is definitely what I'm doing by the end of this year. I keep saying that, but I am going to yeah. in 2023. Um, and they're kind of, I don't know, is it because maybe for some of us, because we've had kids and we've done that bit, it's like now it's my time. I don't know what it is, but I feel like there's, and I do see there's a lot of couples and, you know, they're fine. Mm -hmm. The woman is the one that's talking about maybe there's something that's even more juicy out there, but the guy would never and I guess this is, you know, I'm talking in general terms in my yeah, kind of little sphere, little bubble. But yeah, it's interesting. It is interesting. So and I think are women have you... more support for changing who they are. True. And they have more connection than... with each other to truth yes. talk when they're not Correct. Right. Happy. And men don't have that. No, not as much. Definitely not. Um, when you look back at the version of your beautiful self that made that decision, do you look back and go far out? That took a lot of courage. Like what do you, mm. what do you? What's your frame for yourself when you look back on those times? I see it now as being courageous. At the time, everyone was telling me it was courageous and I couldn't see it. Yeah, yeah, of course, because you're in it. All I saw was, oh my God, this is so hard. I can't believe I'm doing this. This is is like, am I doing the right thing? Yes. For like at least a couple of years, I questioned whether I had done the right thing. God, yeah. And now I can look at it and go, yeah, that did take a lot of courage mm-hmm. and I would not be where I am this in is the, yeah. life and business. Yes. I don't think I could have gotten here if I had stayed. And I, I wanted to ask that question. What, when you look around at the reality of your life now, obviously a significant things change. You're not married anymore, but the, the changes that you notice do you have a sense that they couldn't have happened without that courage, mm-hmm. leap of faith, trust thing? And I think yeah. that that for me is what's always on the other side. It's like, yes, you have to go through the messy, goo, shitty stage where you're in yep. guilt and shame and embarrassment, like anything that comes up. But on the other side, you meet this version of yourself that wants more and actually gets more, like creates yep. more, invites more, allows more to flow. Um and so I just want to, it's not up to me because we're strangers on the internet, but I I really want to honor your courage in um, trusting the inner knowing because I think we have to, well, I know we have to honor that in each other because we need to normalize it because yeah. there's way too many people living lives that don't fit them because they're fine, fine. Right. I love the word. I love the way that you phrase that. It's like, yeah, fuck being fine. hundred percent. Being fine. And <laughs> yeah. And then, right. My podcast is called fine is a four letter word. This is my other question. Fine is a four letter word. Um, right. And you're on all platforms. Yes. Okay. Perfect. And you wanted to share also a resource because we've been talking a lot about gratitude and meditation and you have got a beautiful page on your website that has a gratitude meditation on it. So first of all, yes. um, website please and we'll spell your last name because it's sites but you need to listen to the spelling people so okay so my last name is spelled s as an s-a-i-t-z yep 
but you don't need that to get to the website. The oh, website, sorry. Of course you don't. Cause it's Zen rabbit. It's okay. Oh, sorry. It's okay. The website is zenrabbit.com. Yes. Beautiful. And what you were talking about is I would love to offer anybody who's listening, who would like to download a free six minute gratitude meditation Beautiful. that takes you through feeling gratitude because mm. we didn't get into it. It's not just about listing Noticing. a bunch of things that you're grateful no. for. It's about getting into that feeling mm. of gratitude, which is a little bit more difficult sometimes. Um, but so this six minute gratitude meditation mm. can be yeah. downloaded from the website and you can put a link in the show notes, but yes. zenrabbit.com slash gratitude dash dash meditation. meditation. Yep. We'll put it in the show notes. Yeah. Um, and can you so talk I a little bit? I know we're way over time, but because you're talking about the feeling of um, gratitude, I do want people to get a sense of that because like you say, it's not just the listing, it's the marinating is my word. Yes, know, but how do that. you describe it? How do you describe? Oh, oh like, I think it's that that's too. That's a great yeah. way to describe it. The marinating of it, the feeling of it. And what does gratitude? I get asked this a lot too. What does gratitude feel like? Like, what does it feel? I don't know if I can feel gratitude. Yeah. Gratitude, going back again, gratitude feels like joy. Yeah. 100%. Can you be I feel that, it in my you chest. You know, it's joy. Yeah. And I get And that. people feel Ooh. it in different places. Yeah. But can you feel what joy feels like? Most people know what joy feels like. So if yeah. you can feel what joy feels like, that's what gratitude feels like. Yeah. That's so, it's so good. I, um, I used to have this thing. It's like, oh, a bubble of joy, like a bubble of joy just popped to the surface. It's like mm -hmm. I'm doing my thing. And then I'm like, whoa. And that, that to me is how, you know, and yeah. I have moments. Um, that's why I love being on a motorbike. Cause that to me, that's like the freedom, but also there's a pure unadulterated joy. And so if I had to kind of step into marinating in gratitude from like a low state, that's where I would take myself. I'd literally be like, close my eyes on the back of the bike and yeah, I can feel my, my jacket, my helmet and everything on me. And yeah. And then straight away I can get into that. And I think, yeah. Um, understanding you can shift your state like that is so important. So I'm really yes, glad. That I we love that something. you brought that up because that I do that too. Now, when you are paying attention and you're capturing these moments of gratitude, when you're in them, yes. you can then kind of save them and come back to them Correct. when you want to feel gratitude and get yourself into that gratitude feeling like there are occasions when I go back and I think about like sitting around a fire pit with friends yes. and having drinks and yes. laughing our asses off. Yes. Like that is so joyful. And, and I catch myself when I'm in those moments now and it's almost like taking a picture. Picture. Yes. In your mind. An energy oh. snapshot. <laughs> this feels so good. Yes. And then, then it, it cements it yeah. in your mind so that you can come back to it whenever you'd like. That's such a good, that's such a good reminder because yes, I do think that the gratitude practice has become this very like three things I'm grateful for, bang, bang, yeah, bang. No. And there's not actually mm -hmm. any feeling involved at all. Right. Um, marinate in it. And that's exactly what with the, with the recording of the vision, that's exactly what I'm doing yeah. because I've just recorded a, you know, an audio version of it, but I'm, I've literally put myself into a higher state, you know, doing something yeah. that I love and then recorded it so that, yeah, as soon as I start that, like it's I'm today, I will listen to the May one for the last time, but the, the start of the May one, I keep on changing them, but this is like, Hey, Kit KP, this is your best life. <laughs> Being like I'm, um, I don't know, on a stage and someone doing the like the warm up thing, but it makes me laugh because yeah. I literally did it way more playfully than what I've even done it. You know, I I was doing it very seriously, mm -hmm. and now I'm like loose, 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 ease flow, ease flow. Like just yeah, do it because it feels good. Don't do it for the end result because that yeah. is you know that's the yeah. the addiction of the high achiever is go for the result, and that's um, right. Yeah. Process, not product is another thing that, yes. Mm. I have so enjoyed this chat. Thank you so, so much. For I know time we could go us. on for hours, but we need to wrap um, up. We will put though all of the connections in the show notes. Um, please go and check out the gratitude meditation. I'm going to go and sign up right now because I could do with a little bit more in my arsenal just to remind. Um, thank you for your, yeah, your joy and your wisdom and also just showing us what courage 
you know, courage doesn't feel good all of the time. It feels really sticky a lot of the time when you're in the trusting. Mm -hmm. But also I think one thing that we didn't mention, but it's a great place to end is the more that you practice self-trust and take action through courage, the more that you trust yourself. So it's yes. not a given. You don't just get self-trust on a platter. <laughs> you actually have right. to take action. Um, and you've given yourself, you know, a beautiful example of what it's like to, yeah, really, really trust. I cannot yeah. wait to see what happens next. Yeah, me either. <laughs> Thank you Thank so you. much for hosting me today. And please send us the picture of of your yes. you and your beautiful panther because yes, I will make that your your show note, your um cover would be lovely. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Laurie. Bye-bye. Thanks so much for listening into today's episode. If you love the show, as I hope you do, please take the time to subscribe on your favorite pod listening platform and rate and review. And for bonus points, if you have a friend or someone who popped to mind as you were listening to this episode, why not hit the share link? wherever you're listening and send them a little love bomb like listen to this did you know this is normal (laughs) I really 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 would love to get these beautiful stories into the hearts and ears and minds of so many more midlife mavens and your help spreading the love is truly truly appreciated thank you so much I'm Kylie Patchett your host and have a spectacular day